So here's the situation you may have found yourself in. You're sculpting ahead in ZBrush, and you really feel as if the lightness is getting pretty close. You notice your proportions are all relatively solid, and you know that there really aren't any sort of major anatomical mistakes or anything there that you can spot. And yet, you're still kind of getting that feeling when you're looking at your head that the result is a little bit stiff, that the result is a little bit artificial, and you're just not quite able to put your finger on why that is the case. So if you've been in that situation before, I have a very simple exercise for you that I guarantee is going to increase the level of expressivity in the face that you are sculpting. And it's actually quite a lot of fun to do as well. The exercise is to do a caricature of the head that you are working on, and then afterward to blend together the face that you currently have with the caricature that you'll have done. And this is a great exercise. This works wonderfully, even if you're working on heads that are very realistic. And you're gonna see why as we go through this particular workflow. So I've done this particular exercise myself on my bulkier head that I have been working on. And this is the caricature that I have winded up with. And this is the original head that I started from. So what are the exact steps involved in the process there? Well, if you actually take a close look at my ZBrush UI, you can actually see that my caricature, or here I've called it my cartoon version of Baltier's head, it's actually only one subtool. And within that subtool, I actually have the eyes, I have the hair, I have the head. Everything has actually been merged, and I don't even have any subdivision levels. In fact, if I go down to geometry here, I've actually gotten rid of the subdivision levels. And the reason why I have done all of that, okay, is because I wanted to simplify my life as much as possible. There's really nothing worse than having to deal with a lot of different subtools, even having to deal with things like layers. When we're trying to be expressive, when we're trying to get in the flow of things and just enjoy the sculpting process, really allow ourselves to simply explore shapes and really get absorbed within the shape explorations that we are trying to do. So here is the original tool that I started from. And of course, you can see that the character is fully clothed in this case here. So what we want to do is to take the head, only isolate the subtools that will be part of the head, do a merge visible. And so that's going to give us a merged version of all of those subtools that were there. And then we want to clone that so that we have two different tools that are the exact same. And on one of those two tools, we want to simply go to town and do the caricature version of our head there. And because everything is merged, okay, I don't have any more subdivision levels. And perhaps for some of you, that probably can be scary if you're used to smoothing things a lot, because you know the smooth brush, of course, is dependent on the subdivision level on which you are. But try to work on this without using smooth or using as little of the smooth brush as you can, because you already have a lot of tools at your disposal to be able to do that, okay? So one of my favorite tools, of course, is to simply use the move brush. If I use the move brush here, I can do a lot of really big changes. Our clay brushes, of course, are also great. They work as well, regardless of the amount of polygons that we have over the surface. And I'm actually working on two different videos that I will be releasing in the next few days. One of those talks about how do I actually polish a surface because I don't actually use this move brush that much. And second of all, I'm gonna talk about the different brushes that I use. So we'll be able to delve into a little bit more detail as to what are the brushes that I like to sculpt faces. While you're doing this, try to do this without using any symmetry if you can. Sculpt both sides of the head slightly asymmetrically, and that will simply give you a better result, a more expressive result in the end. Part of why this now looks very stiff to me, I can actually describe to you the exact reasons. So first of all, I have one eye here that's just slightly lower than the other eye that is there. As you can see, he's got a bit of a smirk there as well. So you can see how the mouth is slightly at a diagonal and so are the eyes that are there. Whereas in the original model, if you take a look at the mouth and you take a look at the eyes, everything are completely straight, right? You can see how both sides of the neck are completely parallel, how both sides of the jaw here are also completely parallel. And so all of those lines that are parallel lines really starts to stiffen up uh, quite a lot the face itself and the expressivity that the face demonstrates. You can see how there's actually a bit of a taper that goes down from there all the way to the jaw. And that also kind of follows through 
down to the neck. So I've actually gotten rid of a lot of those parallel lines that I had. We have talked about the fact that there's a little bit more asymmetry to the eyes. So everything is a lot more dynamic. And so that contributes quite a lot to the expressivity of the face. Try to break any kind of lines that could be either parallel to the ground floor as well, or completely perpendicular to your canvas there. Really make sure that everything is at a slight diagonal as you are sculpting your own caricature. As we do caricatures, of course, one way to really do it is to simply exaggerate the size of some of the features of the face, take some of the features of the face, scale them down a little bit more than what they were before, and expand, exaggerate other features. Try to get a bit of a nice interplay of shapes there. Try to exaggerate things until you feel that you've really gone too far. Often you can actually go really far with things and still have something that really holds up because everything else is also slightly exaggerated. So everything kind of fits together there. Doing caricatures is really an invitation to explore doing shapes that are more expressive. Finally, another tool that I really love that's really, really good to make caricatures is uh, this little gear icon. As you put your little gizmo here somewhere over the surface, within the gear icon here, you actually have a lot of different modifiers that you can use. And some of the ones that I really like to use are either band arc or taper, but there's a lot of other ones in there that are great as well. Uh, notably, the uh, deformer soft here is also really, really cool. You can see if I use a band arc here and I start pulling on some of these tanks, let's say I just pull on this one here a little bit, I can actually, as you can see, build a little bit more of an arc in the face just by doing that. And then afterward, I can take the move brush and I can move the features around of the face if I want to because now the face looks like it's kind of a little bit stretched, right? So I could actually use a move brush afterward, maybe make this here look a little bit less stretched and then just continue working from there. And so we have a lot of tools at our disposal that we can use even if we have merged together everything within one subtool. But because everything is merged within one subtool, it's gonna force you to not worry about the technical side of things, not worry about using layers, not even worry about using subdivision levels. Just go to town, take the move brush, turn off symmetry, and just have a blast sculpting asymmetric, expressive anatomy on top of your head. Now, of course, one of the harder things about caricature is that we are often magnifying facial features. And so it's important that we have a strong base in anatomy, because if we don't, we won't know what to exaggerate. We won't be able to be as effective. But so if anatomy is something that you struggle with, I've actually recorded a lot of classes on the topic to really help you level up your anatomy game. And the classes that I have recorded go from covering everything that you need to know about the skull, through the facial fat pads of the face, through the muscles. And there's also a very in-depth study of all the important facial features. And I've made all that available for you on my own platform, algang.studio. That's a great resource if you're looking to level up your anatomy game. As an added bonus, if you sign up for the membership on agang.studio, you can even have access to this very head here because I am making it available to all members on the website. If I go back to my final caricature here, once you're done with that, this is where the magic happens, okay? Because now what we want to do is to blend together this caricature with the original head that we have created. So I still have here my two different tools, as you can see. This is my merged original head. This is my cartoon head. And if we want to blend in between these two, it's extremely simple, okay? All that we have to do is to take the caricature of our head that we have done, export this out as an OBJ. So I'm just going to click here on export. I'm just going to save this out. And now let me swap back to the original head that we have here. And we are going to import the OBJ that we have just exported over this head. But before I do that, very, very important thing is to go down to our morph menu here and to simply store a morph target. So where it says store empty here, click on that because this is very, very important. And now I can go to import. I can load in my caricature. And now this is where the magic happens. I have a little morph slider here. And what I'm essentially gonna do, I'm simply going to play around with this slider. And as you can see, as I'm doing that, I'm actually morphing between our original head and our caricature here. And the great thing about this is that I can actually choose to stop at any point that I want. But if I want to keep this within the realism spectrum, let's say, then what I want to do is to probably take the morph here and just push it at maybe, I don't know, maybe 10% or so. 
uh, actually a bit higher than that. So maybe somewhere around 20 to 30%, right? And this head here, it still feels to us like it's as realistic as what we had started with here. But I'm starting to have a little bit of that caricature starting to punch through here. And I could actually morph it a little bit further if I want to. I, I think I actually want to do that here. So let me actually morph this here, maybe another 15 to 20% there, right? This is our original head once again. And this is after having blended in there just a little bit of that caricature. Doesn't this head look a lot more expressive now? You can see how the neck is just slightly, very slightly slanted on one side. I actually have a little bit more of a taper that has been built within the head overall. Even the eyes, they just feel like they just have a little bit more life to them than what we had before. There's a little bit more of that asymmetry that is starting to punch through a little bit everywhere. And I could actually use the morph brush if I want to push some of the zones of the face a little bit further, if I actually want the mouth to be slightly more towards that caricature that I have sculpted. And so this is what the exercise is. You can choose to blend in the caricature as much as you want until you really get that sweet spot for yourself. And so once we're done with that, once we're happy with the head, then how do we complete this? Well, now we simply split this back into its corresponding subtools. It's as simple as that. I had merged together three different subtools, the head, the eyes, and the hair. And although they're all merged within the same subtool, I can now split them back in three separate subtools. I'm going to isolate only the head here, and then I'm going to go within our split menu right here. I'm going to do a split hidden, which will leave us with our head as a separate subtool than the eyes and the hair. And now let me hide the eyes now. And let's once again do a split hidden. And now I'm back having my three original subtools. And finally, I can recover the subdivision levels that I have started with on the head by selecting it, going down to geometry, and simply doing a reconstruct. And I will be able to reconstruct all the way down to the lowest subdivision level that I have started with. As a bonus, you now have a caricature that you can throw within your portfolio. So as you can see, this is a very simple exercise that you can do one evening. Take the head that you have, merge all the subtools that are relevant together, go to town, make a caricature version of that. Just spend one evening, do that, do that very loosely. Make sure that you get out of the way all the technical side of things. Don't worry about layers. Don't worry about subdivision levels. Just take the head, go to town, have some fun. And once you're done, merge back the two heads together the way that I have just shown you and then split your merged tool into its corresponding subtools in the end. So I hope you find this workflow interesting. And if you do decide to give it a try, let us know within the comments what you actually thought about it and if it actually helped you to create more expressive heads, because I would really, really love to know that. Until next time, take care.